Have you ever wondered if humans are getting smarter? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? We often hear about how technology is advancing at breakneck speed, but what about our own minds? Well, there's this intriguing phenomenon called the Flynn Effect that suggests our IQ scores have been steadily increasing over time. But hold on to your hats, because there's a twist this trend might be reversing. Picture this. You're taking an IQ test from the 1950s. You'd probably find it surprisingly easy, right? That's not because you're a genius. Well, maybe you are. I don't know you. But because of the Flynn Effect. Named after researcher James Flynn, this effect describes the substantial and long-sustained increase in both fluid and crystallized intelligence test scores measured in many parts of the world over the 20th century. Now, let's break this down a bit. Fluid intelligence refers to our ability to think abstractly, identify patterns, and solve problems without prior knowledge. Crystallized intelligence, on the other hand, is the ability to use learned knowledge and experience. Both of these have been on the up and up, according to IQ tests. But Here's where it gets really interesting. The increase isn't small or gradual. We're talking about a rise of about three IQ points per decade. That means over the course of a century, average IQ scores have increased by 30 points. That's huge. It's the difference between an average score and a gifted score. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are we really getting smarter or are we just getting better at uh, taking tests? It's a fair question and one that's kept researchers scratching their heads for decades. The truth is, we're not entirely sure. One theory suggests that improved nutrition, better education, and more stimulating environments have all contributed to this increase in IQ scores. Think about it. We're exposed to so much more information on a daily basis than our grandparents were. From smartphones to the internet, we're constantly processing complex data. It's like our brains are at the gym 24 7 Let's dive a bit deeper into these factors. Nutrition, for instance, plays a crucial role in brain development. Over the past century, we've seen significant improvements in diet quality and availability in many parts of the world. Better nutrition, especially in early childhood, can lead to better brain development and potentially higher cognitive abilities. Education is another key factor. Not only has access to education improved globally, but our educational methods have also evolved. We're now teaching children to think critically and solve problems from a young age, skills that are directly tested in IQ tests. And let's not forget about our environment. We live in a world that's vastly more complex than it was a century ago. From navigating social media to understanding global politics, we're constantly required to process and analyze information. This mental stimulation could be contributing to improve cognitive abilities. But here's where things get really interesting. Recent studies have shown that this upward trend might be slowing down or even reversing in some developed countries. It's like we've hit peak IQ and now we're on the downslope. But why? Some researchers argue that we've reached the limits of how much we can improve through better nutrition and education. It's possible that we've already reaped most of the benefits from these factors and now we're seeing diminishing returns. Others point to factors like changes in the way we use technology. Sure, we have access to more information than ever before, but are we using it effectively? There's a concern that our reliance on technology for basic cognitive tasks like remembering phone numbers or navigating, might be reducing our need to exercise certain mental muscles. There's also the issue of decreased reading. With the rise of video content and short-form media, people are spending less time reading long-form text. Reading, especially of complex material, is known to improve vocabulary and critical thinking skills, both key components of IQ tests. Environmental factors are another potential culprit. Some studies suggest that exposure to certain pollutants might be negatively impacting cognitive development. It's a sobering reminder that our intelligence doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's intimately connected to the world around us. Now, before you start panicking about the future of human intelligence, let's take a step back. IQ tests are just one way of measuring cognitive abilities, and they have their limitations. They don't capture creativity, emotional intelligence, or practical skills, all crucial aspects of human intelligence. Think about it. Some of the most groundbreaking innovations in recent years haven't come from simply being smart in the traditional sense, but from creative thinking, emotional understanding, and practical application of knowledge. These are aspects of intelligence that IQ tests often fail to measure. Moreover, the Flynn effect and its potential reversal don't necessarily mean that individuals are getting smarter or dumber. These are population-level trends that don't predict the intelligence of any single person. 
You're not destined to be less intelligent than your parents, just as they weren't guaranteed to be smarter than their parents. It's also worth noting that IQ scores are normalized. This means that the average score is always set to 100, with scores above and below representing deviations from this average. So, when we talk about IQ scores increasing or decreasing, we're really talking about how people perform relative to the established norm, not absolute intelligence. So, what does all this mean for us? Well, it's a reminder that human intelligence is a complex and ever-evolving concept. It challenges us to think about how we define and measure intelligence, and what factors influence cognitive development. It also raises some profound questions about our future. If IQ scores are indeed declining, what implications might this have for society, technology, and human progress? How can we ensure that we continue to develop our cognitive abilities in a world that's becoming increasingly complex? These are the kinds of questions that keep me up at night. They're not just academic puzzles. They have real-world implications for education, public policy, and how we prepare for the future. For instance, should we be changing our educational systems to counteract this potential decline? Maybe we need to put more emphasis on developing critical thinking skills or finding ways to leverage technology that enhance rather than replace cognitive functions. 